Dear students, welcome to the EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Raj Kishore Sharma, an Associate Professor in Chemistry Department of University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Analysis of X-ray Diffraction Data under the paper of Surface Analytical Techniques 2. X-ray diffraction or XRD analysis is an analytical technique designed to provide more in-depth information about crystalline compounds including identification and quantification of crystalline phases. This is a useful tool when we want to identify a contaminant or corrosion product or for ident identification of foreign phases for purity analysis of crystalline powders. X-ray diffraction pattern is the fingerprint of the periodic atomic arrangements in a given material. The topics which we will discuss today information in a diffraction pattern, data collection and the analysis, indexing a powder pattern, initial phasing, reciprocal lattice vector, structure factor, system absences, intensity of diffracted beam and lattice strain. Type of information in XRD analysis. Some experiments, some experimental results to analyze. We have used two res uh, experimental results here. For example, polyaniline in polyaniline nanosheets and despacing of the carbonized polyaniline nanosheet samples. The other experimental result we have included here is the extra diffraction pattern of alpha nickel cobalt hydroxide over nickel shell. So, there is an experimental result in which we use nickel shell as a substrate and coated nickel cobalt hydroxide over it and we will discuss the XRD analysis of this sample. In the third, we use vanadium oxide nanostrips coated over graphene materials. X-ray safety will also be discussed. XRD analysis is based on constructive interference of monochromatic X-rays and a crystalline sample. The X-rays are generated by a cathode ray tube filtered to produce monochromatic radiation, collimated to concentrate and directed towards the sample. The interaction of the incident rays with the sample produce con constructive interference when conditions satisfy Bragg's law that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. This law relates the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation to the diffraction angle and the lattice spacing in a crystalline sample. The characteristic X-ray diffraction patterns generated in a typical XRD analysis provides a unique fingerprint of the crystal present in the sample. When properly interpreted by comparison with standard reference patterns and measurements, this fingerprint allows identification of the crystalline forms. Information which we get from a diffraction, diffraction patterns are number one, the phase ident identification, number two, the crystal size, number three, crystal quality, number four, texture to some extent, five is the crystal structure. First of all, we will discuss the sample preparation for X-ray diffraction analysis. All types of powder diffraction analysis are non-destructive. The XRD measurement requires about one gram of the powder sample. Intensity abrasion minimization of samples with large unit cells may require about 5 gram of a material. Generally, 5 gram of sample material is preferred, although quantities as gram as 0.25 gram can be analyzed. For routine qualitative analysis, approximately 1 gram sample is sufficient for the diffraction analysis. In case of well crystalline, single grain sample about 1 milligram of the material is sufficient. For bulk sample analysis where certain fraction is to be extracted we require preferably more than 10 gram of the sample. Neutron diffraction requires normally larger amounts sample that is 5 to 10 gram. The sample should be representative of bulk material and should be crushed to less than 50 micron powder. Now we will discuss about the steps involved in interpretation, interpretation of the diffraction data. First of all, two theta range is to be selected in which we need to record the diffraction pattern. Then step size 
and time per step is to be selected. Then hardware test is done which involves slit size, filter and sample alignment. Once hardware test report is ok then fast scan is followed with a slower scan. Then we look for fluorescence. After the data is collected then the normalized data is used for comparison. Main application of X-ray diffraction analysis includes the nanomaterial, we look for phase composition, crystallite size and shape, we look for lattice distortions and faulting, we test compositional variations, orientation, in situ structure development etc. This technique is also used in reservoir core analysis, fuel quality testing, new material research and development, polymers and composites, pharmaceuticals and organics, polymorphs, crystallinity and orientation. We will discuss one of the applications that is nanotechnological research involving material structure analysis via X-ray diffraction. Nanotechnology research and X-ray analysis is applied to the understanding of characteristics of nanomaterials and nanostructures for their crystallinity, semi-crystalline nature, amorphous character, etc. This is used in industries such as glass and polymer industry and requires specialist understanding for interpretation of results. Analysis of peak shape give information about crystallite size and other aspects of microstructure, particularly lattice distortions due to the composition or micro strain variation and faulting. XRD provides an adaptable method for measuring crystalline phase, degree of crystallinity and structure. Crystalline orientation is another important parameter that is provided by the X-ray diffraction technique. We will discuss how to analyze the data obtained from X-ray diffraction. Using mathematical technique of Fourier transforms, the recorded series of two-dimensional diffraction pattern is converted into three-dimensional model of electron density. The first step is data processing through indexing reflections. This means identifying the dimension of the unit cell and the peak corresponding to which position in the reciprocal space. Symmetry of crystal that is space group is determined by the byproduct of indexing. Indexing is generally accompanied using an auto indexing routine. The data is then integrated over assigning the symmetry which results in conversion of hundreds of images containing the thousands of reflections into a single file. A full set of data contains hundreds of separate images taken at different orientations of the crystal. Now an important step in data analysis is the indexing. Indexing is the process of determining the unit cell dimensions from the peak positions. To index a powder diffraction pattern it is necessary to assign the Miller indices that is HKL to each peak. A diffraction pattern cannot be analyzed until it has been indexed. It is always the first step in analysis. Unfortunately, it is not just the sample reverse of calculating peak positions from the unit cell of dimensions and wavelengths. For lower symmetry structures, that is orthorhombic, monoclinic, or triclinic, it is usually necessary to use a computer algorithm. This is called auto indexing. Manual indexing consists of the following steps that is, to determine despacing of each peak from its 2 theta value using Bragg's law. To create a table of 1 upon d, create a table of 1 upon d2 values for each peak. Then look for a common factor that is 1 upon a and 1 upon a2 that can be divided into each of the 1 upon d into each upon 1 upon d2 values. Now we will discuss the initial phasing. The data collected from a diffraction pattern is a reciprocal space representation of the crystal lattice. The position of each diffraction spot is governed by the inherent symmetry within the crystal and by the shape and size of the unit cell. The intensity of each spot is recorded and is proportional to the square of the structure factor amplitude. The structure factor is defined as the complex number which contains information relating to both the phase and the amplitude of the wave. The phase cannot be recorded directly during the experiment and 
This is known as the phase problem. The initial phasing can be divided into different ways. Number one is ab initio phasing or direct methods. Number two is the molecular replacement. Number three, anomalous X-ray scattering, which is also known as MAD or SAD phasing. The fourth is heavy atom methods. These are multiple isomorphous replacements. Now we will discuss the reciprocal lattice vector. The reciprocal lattice represents the Fourier transform of another lattice, usually a Bravis lattice. In normal uses, the first lattice, whose transform is represented by the reciprocal lattice, is usually a periodic spatial function in real space and is also known as the direct lattice. While the direct lat lattice exists in real space and is what one would commonly understand as a physical lattice, the reciprocal lattice exists in reciprocal space and also known as momentum space or less common, commonly K space. The reciprocal lattice plays a fundamental role in most analytical studies of periodic structures, particularly in the theory of diffraction. In neutron and extra diffraction, due to the Lave conditions, the momentum difference between incoming and diffracted X-rays of a crystal is a reciprocal lattice vector. The diffraction pattern of a crystal can be used to determine the reciprocal vectors of the lattice. Using this process, one can infer the atomic arrangement of a crystal. The structure factor is a mathematical function describing the amplitude and the phase of the wave diffracted from crystal lattice planes characterized by Miller indices HKL. The structure factor is a critical tool interpretation of scattering patterns that is the interference patterns obtained in X-ray diffraction, electron and neutron diffraction experiments also. The intensity of diffracted beam is directly related to the amplitude of the structure factor. But the phase must normally be reduced by indirect means. In structural determination, phases are estimated and an initial description of the position and anisotropic displacements of the scattering atoms is deduced. From this initial model, Structure factors are calculated and compared with those experimentally observed. Iterative refinement procedures attempted to minimize the difference between calculation and experiments until a satisfactory fit has been obtained. As we can see from the image shown in this slide, some lines are absent from the intensity versus 2 theta graph. This is because every transition is not allowed. There are certain restrictions which are as follows. Number one, for cubic lattice, all transitions are allowed. Number two, for phase centered cubic system, allowed transitions are where H, K, L are all odd or all are even. As we can from the graph, only 111, 200, 220, and 222 is allowed rest are restricted and we can say as these as system absences for body centered cubic system that is h plus k plus l should be even if h plus k plus l is odd we do not get any transition if the lattice is not primitive certain classes of miller indices that is hkl peaks will be missing these are called systematic absences and we can use them to determine the space group. The permitted reflections are shown in image. For simple, for simple cubic, 100, 110, 111, 200, it, etc. are the permitted reflections. For body centered cubic, 110, 200, 211, 220, etc. are the permitted reflections. For FCC, that is face centered cubic, 111200 220 etc are the permitted reflections discuss the diffraction pattern of a nacl crystal the diffraction pattern of nacl crystal in a tube facing x-ray beam each peak in the pattern represents a particular plane as we can see various planes are shown in the pattern that is 111 200 220 311 etc 
the d spacing of each peak is then obtained by solution of bragg's equation for the appropriate value of lambda once all d spacings have been determined automated search or match routines compare the d spacing of the unknown to those of known materials because material has a unique set of d spacing matching these with d spacing provides an identification of the unknown sample a systematic procedure is used by ordering the d spacings in terms of their intensities beginning with the most intense peak files of d spacings for hundred of thousands of inorganic compounds are available from the international center of diffraction data as the powder diffraction files we call them pdf many other sites contain d spacing of minerals such as the american mineralogist crystal structure database commonly this information is an integral portion of the software that comes with the instrumentation in the absence of all other factors of the intensity of the diffracted x ray is equal to the square of the structure factor but there are number of other factors that affect the intensity the first is polarization factor second one is structure factor we have already discussed about this the third is multiplicity factor the multiplicity factor refers to the relative proportion of the planes contributing to diffraction more the number of planes greater is the intensity compare diffraction from the 100 and 11 set of planes of a cubic crystal the 100 family has three planes that is 100 010 and 001 with the d spacing but with different orientations the a11 the 111 family has four planes with the same d spacing but different orientations these are all 111 111 111 and the last one as 111 thus everything else begin the same the ratio of intensities from 100 and 111 planes will be in the ratio of 3 by 4 the fourth is lorentz factor the lorentz factor is a trigonometric factor that relates to the distribution of planes as function of 2 theta for a powder sample with randomly oriented particles the integrated intensity that is area under the curve of a reflection at a given bragg angle depends on the number of particles with that orientation even though the particles are obtained the particles are oriented at random this number is not a constant but depends on the value of the bragg angle the fifth is absorption factor the x ray intensity also depends on the absorption of the specimen being investigated this also depends on the geometry of the setup in the case of diffractometer the absorption factor is independent of the bragg angle and does not affect the relative intensities of different lines the sixth is temperature factor atoms in the lattice are constantly vibrating about their equilibrium position as the temperature increases this vibration amplitude amplitude increases one effect of this vibration is that the lattice spacing constantly changes so that the overall intensity of a line decreases with increasing temperature at the same time background scattering increases for a given temperature this effect is pronounced at higher bragg angle since the d spacing is smaller the temperature effect is usually determined experimentally and is written in the form of exponential minus 2m when crystallites are less than approximately 1000 angstrom in size appreciable broadening in the x ray diffraction line occurs these regions may in fact correspond to the actual size of the particles at other times however these regions from domains in the larger particle and may be a distinguishes an important feature in either case the observed line broadening can be used to estimate the average size in the simplest case where the particles are stress free the size is estimated from a single diffraction peak but in those cases where stress may be present a more robust method involving several diffraction peaks is required as it is seen from the image as the strain increases broadening of peak occurs the formula of broadening is also given there now about d spacing of lattice planes 
It depends on the size of the elementary cell and determines the position of the peak. Each peak measures a day spacing that represents a family of lattice planes. Now about intensity of each peak. This is caused by the crystallographic structure that is position of the atoms within the elementary cell and their thermal vibrations. Line width and the shape of the peak derived from the particle size and particle size of the sample material under testing. Relative position of the diffraction peak. It depends on the size and shape of the unit cell and provides information about the location of the lattice planes in the crystal structure. Now the type of information by X-ray diffraction analysis. The kind of material that compose a solid. This, this information is called qualitative analysis. The second is the quality of material that compose the solid it is called the quantitative analysis. The third is the quality of materials that are crystallized. So it is called the crystallinity. The amount of stress present in the solid, this is known as residual stress. The size of the crystallite that compose the solid, it's called the crystallite size. Average orientation of the crystallites that compose the solid are known as texture. Is a case study where we will discuss the exit diffraction patterns of polyaniline nanosheets and that is abbreviated as PNS and despacing of the carbonized PNS that is polyaniline nanosheets. So in this research, researchers did, they took nanostructured polyaniline and they carbonized it at different temperatures. So we will see the corresponding effects on the exit diffraction. Here as you see in the diffraction patterns, Pani or the polyaniline, the prominent peak at 2 theta of 14.5, 19.6 and 25.5 are associated with 001, 020 and 200 planes of emeraldine salt of polyaniline. After pyrolysis, the pyrolyzed sample show characteristic peaks of carbon corresponding to 002 plane at 21 degree and the D spacing calculated from this peak are shown in the figure. Intensity of despacing shows an increase from PNS to the carbonized Pani that is NCNS carbonized at 400 degree centigrade. So the despacing in this case is 0.45 nanometer. However, on further increasing the temperature, a decrease in despacing to 0.4 nanometer that is in case of carbonizing it at 500 degree C. On further increasing the temperature to 600, the D spacing is noticed at 0.37 nanometer. Pyrolyzed samples show characteristic peak of carbon corresponding to 002 plane at 21 degree and the D spacing calculated from this peak are shown in figure. Interestingly, the D spacing shows an increase from PNS that is 0.33 nanometer to NCNS 400 that is 0.45 nanometer. So there is an increase in D spacing. However, on further increasing the temperature, a decrease in the D spacing 2.45 nanometer that is for the sample carbonized at 500 degree C and 0.37 for the sample which is carbonized at 600 degree C is noticed. So the change in D spacing is observed because of the structural changing at different temperature annealings. Depicts another case study of alpha nickel cobalt hydroxide on nickel shells. Here the 2 theta peaks at 11.1, 16.8, 19.2, 33.8, 38.4 and 59.5 well coincide to 003, 100, 006, 101, 015 and 110 deflections of alpha nickel cobalt hydroxide. The interlayer spacing calculated from 003 reflection is approximately 8 angstroms that is the typical signature of the presence of intercalated ions in alpha phase. Further 003 and 006 diffraction peaks are quite similar whereas the diffraction peaks assigned to 101 that is D spacing is 2.68 angstrom has a short tooth shape which is a characteristic feature. The above features are the typical characteristics of turbostatic phases. 
the diffraction pattern of synthesized Ca pani that is carbon aerogel and pani polyaniline nanocomposite. Two broad characteristic peaks centered at 2 theta value of 24 and 43 are observed in X-ray diffraction patterns of carbon aerogel which can be indexed to 002 and 100 graphitic planes. The most intense peak observed at 2 theta value of 24.5 exhibit enhanced despacing that is 3.63 angstrom than that of typical graphitic geometry that is 3.4 angstroms. The diffraction pattern of synthesized carbon aerogel polyaniline nanocomposite shows 5 typical peaks at 8.7, 14.9, 20.5, 25.3, 27.3, 27 corresponding to 001, 010, 011, 020, 200 planes of the polyaniline. Peaks at 20.5 and 25.3 are attributed to periodicity city parallel and perpendicular to the polyadiline polymeric chains respectively the researchers have synthesized vanadium oxide nanostrips on graphene nanostructures so lgonr refers to the lacy graphene oxide nano ribbon lacy represents the holy structure of the graphene nano ribbon so here for lgonr diffraction pattern shows two peaks at 2 theta is equal to 9.8 and 43.5 corresponding to 002 and 100 lattice planes respectively. The diffraction patterns in figure reveals characteristic peaks of vanadium oxide at 2 theta is equal to 20 20.3, 27.3, 28.2, 28.8, 32.6, 38.6, 41.2, 47.7, 51.7, 59.8, 61.2, and 70.4. These are indexed to an orthorhombic lattice structure and matches well with the JCPDS card number 00009-0387. JCPDS refers to the Joint Committee Powder Diffraction Samples. The diffraction peaks of GNR at VOS, uh, vanadium oxide on graphene nanoribbon, composite occurs at 11.2 and 17.4, and 69.5. The diffraction pattern of GNR at VOS highlights better resolved diffraction peaks with enhanced inst intensity compared to vanadium oxide nanostrips suggesting improved crystalline nature when it is deposited on the graphene narrow ribbons shows the nanostructured morphology. Now there are some points to remember. X-rays are extremely dangerous and must be handled with caution. They are dangerous because they penetrate the human body and breaks up the molecules of DNAs. Also the skin will be sloshed like a sunburn. However, after the breaking of DNA molecule, if they join in wrong way, it can lead to cancer. Now, let's summarize all the content that we have learned today. XR diffraction or XRD analysis is an identical technique, is an analytical technique designed to provide more in-depth information about crystalline compounds, including identification and quantification of crystalline phases. This is, use, this is a useful tool when trying to identify a contaminant or corrosion product and for identification of a for, foreign phase for purity analysis of a crystalline powder. As said before, the X-ray diffraction pattern is a fingerprint of the periodic atomic arrangement in a given material. The interaction of incident rays with the sample produces constructive interference when conditions satisfy. Bragg's law that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. Using mathematical technique of Fourier transform, the recorded series of two-dimensional diffraction pattern is converted into a three-dimensional model of electron density. The first step in data processing is indexing the reflections. This means identifying the dimensions of the unit cell and 
which peak corresponds to what position in the reciprocal space. The structure factor is a mathematical function describing the amplitude and the phase of a wave diffracted from crystal lattice plane characterized by Miller indices. The structure factor is a critical tool in the interpretation of scattering patterns obtained in XRD. The reciprocal lattice represents the Fourier transform of another lattice, usually a Bravis lattice. Thank you.